Randall Cobb might end up having a bigger role with the New York Jets than originally thought, and it might not be a terrible thing. What's going on? Matt O'Leary back with another video. Just wanted to mention you can follow on socials and also be sure to check out the Just Jets podcast. New episodes drop every single Wednesday. Okay, so Rich Samini put out an article earlier in the week and he had this to say about Randall Cobb having a bigger role on the Jets than maybe some would think. He says, if you think Cobb is just going to be a spare part on offense, think again. Not only is he the only pure slot receiver on the roster, but he has the trust of Rodgers, and that counts for a lot. The 32-year-old Cobb still was targeted on 20.6% of his routes run last season, according to ESPN Stats and Information, his highest percentage since 2014. If Cobb can stay healthy, an issue in recent years, he will be part of the receiver rotation. Now, this is not to come out and say that he is going to outpace Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, or probably even Corey Davis. Corey Davis has been banged up a lot over the last two years uh, and has had 54 and 64 targets over the last couple of years, while Randall Cobb has had 50 and 39 targets the last two years. So, like, this is not me coming on and saying that he's going to have, you know, 60, 60 plus targets, but I think there's a chance that he maybe has some more targets and. Uh, more usage than Nicole Hardman. I just think they're going to be utilized differently. I think Hardman is going to be more of uh, the gadget guy that Elijah Moore and Braxton Berrios were in this offense over the last couple of years. Uh, and, you know, I think he'll be close in terms of number of, of catches to Randall Cobb. But the familiarity, as uh, Rich Samini mentions, is obviously something that is important, but it does go deeper than that. As I mentioned, I think it's probably going to end up for wide receivers and not counting tight ends or running backs as pass catchers, but just the the ranking of who's going to have the most targets and receptions. I would think Wilson, Lazard, Davis, and Cobb not that far off behind Corey Davis at this point. Um, Cobb is just, as mentioned, a reliable receiver. Still, even at this point in his career, I know he's not the receiver of old. I'm not saying he's going to put up 1,200 yards. That's not what he is or who he is anymore. But over the last two years, he's caught 69.7% of his targets. Uh, in comparison to the other wide receivers on this Jets roster, Davis was 53.7, Lazard 62.5, Hardman 71.8, uh, and Wilson 56.5. Now, some of that has to do with quarterback play uh, because some of the balls going their way on their targets are not catchable passes or not really reliable ones. So it's not really super surprising to see Hardman and Cobb and Lazard, you know, doing a better job, but also just comparatively why Hardman and Cobb, I think have more receptions is they play primarily in the slot. They get open a a lot more and they have a wide, a quarterback, excuse me, who can get them the football with, with relative ease. Um, and again, this is not me saying that Hardman is not going to be a part of this offense. I think he he is, and I, and I do like Nicole Hardman, but uh, I don't think it's crazy to say that Cobb might end up having a slightly bigger role in the offense than him. And Cobb's still an effective receiver. Out of 62 qualified slot receivers last year, here's some rankings for how he was in some uh, certain key metrics he was 12th in yards after catch per reception so doing it per reception makes it a little bit easier because of some people's playing times or or, you know vary a little bit uh so 12th there uh, you know above average 26th in yards per route run he was eighth in average depth of target so he was getting the ball down the field a little bit more than some of the other slot wide receivers uh significantly more again as he was top 10 in that he was eighth in Uh, in terms of average depth of target. Uh, And there were 15 players who had zero drops on the season. Uh, Cobb had just one and had a 3.8 drop percentage, which actually ranked him 27th. So he's above average in each of those four categories. And, you know, again, this is someone who has a relationship with with Rodgers. And it's not to say that he's going to, you know, have a bigger season than Garrett Wilson or that Wilson's not going to get the same amount of, you know, targets as we we're expecting, or even someone like Alan Lazard. But uh, having someone who is one, a still a reliable receiver, and number two, someone that is familiar with 
not only Aaron Rodgers, but also Nathaniel Hackett. Like Hackett is also part of the reason why Randall Cobb is here. He's familiar with him, and he mentioned that in terms of why he came here. It was uh, three reasons. One, Aaron Rodgers, Nathaniel Hackett too, and his wife is from New Jersey. So there were multiple reasons for why he ended up as a member of the New York Jets, and it wasn't just Aaron Rodgers. There were other factors that came in this um, as well. And again, this is not a panic that, oh my God, he's going to be utilized so much more than we think. I would imagine that Lazard and Davis are going to be on the outside with Garrett Wilson in the slot a lot of the time. They can move him around. They can move all three of those guys around, like Corey Davis and Alan Lazard have experience playing as a big slot. Uh, Randall Cobb you could have in the slot. He's not really someone you want to put on the outside. Nicole Hardman, same deal. You could put him in the slot, but they have receivers who are versatile, uh, and you could give different looks based on what you want to do, but... You know, with the amount of time that they played Garrett Wilson in the slot last year, if you remember early on, people were like, hey, you got to move Elijah Moore inside, have him uh, play the slot. They liked how Garrett Wilson did it a lot. He was extremely, extremely effective from there. So my guess would be there, again, it's just purely a guess, but my guess would be that their base would be with Garrett in the slot and the two bigger receivers in Davis and Lazard on the outside. Again, they, they can't make it clear enough how much they love Corey Davis in this offense. He is going to be here. It is still yet to be seen if he is going to take a pay cut or not to be on this team or a restructure or if he's going to be in on that. But Alan Lazard, someone they brought in that they view as a solid number two option. He does the little things right. Yes, he's a similar receiver to Corey Davis, but at the end of the day, his familiarity with Aaron Rodgers, I think is going to give him a leg up as that number two. And then Corey Davis follows there. With Lazard, uh, excuse me, with Cobb rather, and Miko Hardman following behind that. But that's my take on it. Uh, again, it's not super surprising uh, to see that, you know, that's being the take. Health is definitely going to play a factor in this. Cobb at this point in his career is, I don't think you should expect him to suit up 17 games or start. Like, again, he's maybe going to start a handful of games, you know, technically have the, the start. But I mean, this is a guy who's maybe going to get. 45, 50 targets on the year, 30 catches. This is not someone who you have to worry about stealing targets, so to speak, from a Garrett Wilson or Alan Lazard or Corey Davis. But that's just my take on it. Sound off below. I want to hear what you have to say about Randall Cobb. Once again, I am Matt O'Leary. I'll catch you next time.